Are you looking for a PhD or MS in chemistry in foreign? Well, this video is for you. In this video, I'll talk about uh, different examinations, LOR, CV, letter of recommendation, what all things are needed uh, during your applications. I'll also talk about the whole application process and by what month you should be finished by what exams, what things. And if you can follow this, I'm sure you'll get a good university for your PhD. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon for receiving latest updates on exams, research positions and guidance videos. So let's start the video. So first of all, uh, you should be very rigid about your decision. Uh, you should be clear why I want to go outside, why I don't want to do my PhD or MS in India. Uh, it could be due to facilities, it could be due to research topic, or it could be simply roaming around. I like to go out, I like to explore new cultures. That could be one possible reason. And uh, especially one thing, uh, if you want to go out for your PhD in chemistry or MS, the first thing is start early. Starting early is really, really important. Okay. So uh, if you want to do your PhD outside, you need to have a four years of bachelor's in India, but uh, for in uh, usually in India, it's about three years. So uh, what people do is they use, uh, they do their MSc uh, or MS in India and then they go out to do their PhDs. For bachelors of engineering, you are eligible for doing a PhD directly uh, because you have an engineering degree of four years. So uh, if you're an MS student, in the first semester itself, you should be clear about if I want to go out or I want to do my master's or I want to do my PhD in India. If you're in engineering, you want to do your PhD in engineering or chemical engineering, chemistry, you, by the third year, you should be clear about it. And once you have reasons for going out, I think you're up for the applications. So basically, I'll tell you whole thing starting from August to next March. So usually in uh, intakes, there are two intakes, the fall intake and uh, spring intake. So fall is, intake is simply like uh, starting from August, September, that is the uh, usual basis, same in India. And spring means you want to start at uh, like January, February or December. So usually uh, most universities prefer fall admissions, uh, just like India, uh, where you uh, get to your uh, MS in or BSc in starting from August. So that is the main thing. So if you want to join, let's say you are an MSc student right now and you want to uh, do your PhD in 2021 August or starting from August and you are in like third or fourth semester right now. So the very important thing is that you start exactly one year earlier than that. So by July, uh, if you start from the timeline from July, August, September, October, by July, you should know that you have following options. You can either do it in US or Canada. You can go to Europe where Germany, UK, France uh, is a good option. Usually people prefer it. Australia is an emerging option or you want to do it in Asian countries like Japan, Singapore, China, Korea. These are some emerging and extremely good university. So by July, you should be clear about, I want to do it in Europe. I want to do it in Australia. Or I want to do it in um, Asian countries or US. So that is something that you should uh, do by July. Uh, Telling, I'm telling you, you should do this by July. And August and September, actually, uh, once you decide I want to uh, go to this particular country, usually countries have a special examination. Let's say uh, US, which is a popular destination for a PhD, usually requires you to submit GRE scores and uh, English proficiency tests. So English, GRE is usually specific to US, Canada, uh, Japanese, or uh, some Japanese uh, uh, universities also prefer uh, taking it. Uh, SNU. So like there are some university prestigious universities that prefer GRE scores. So uh, if you're looking for a PhD in those countries, uh, make sure that you have your GRE. Especially uh, another thing is uh, the English proficiency test. That is something required irrespective of you go to US, China, Europe or Asian countries. English proficiency tests are compulsory in most of these places. And uh, that's why uh, you should make sure you should make a list that I want to uh, have a GRE, I want to have a TOEFL or ILTS. So in GRE is a separate test. In English proficiency, you can either have a TOEFL or ILTS. So uh, you need to have uh, respectable scores in both of them. So once you know that I need to give GRE and ILTS, you should start studying it. And by September, you have July, August, or if GRE is something that you need to actually study uh, for months uh, separately, separately, and uh, you have to give it one to two hours every day. 
so that is something that is a long run so by august or september by 1st September, you should have your GRE, ILTS or TOEFL scores with you. So GRE, uh, usually people say that uh, if you want a very good universities like uh, let's say Northwestern, MIT, Harvard or Purdue, Purdue doesn't require GRE. So there are some respectable uh, respect, uh, universities like Toronto. So people say that there's a limit of 320 plus in GRE. Well, 320 plus is really a good score. Uh, but uh, believe me that even if you get uh, around 295, 300, you still have a chance. It doesn't mean that 320 is a minimum. Uh, GRE is required that uh, you may have a 300 score, you have a 305, you may have 330. So uh, yeah, your uh, GRE scores may determine which universities you get, but it doesn't stop you to uh, uh, specific universities. So. Uh, just in case you get 295 or 300, you still have a chance uh, to get to mediocre uh, universities in US or any place else. And for English, uh, TOEFL scores are uh, actually English proficiency scores are minimum. So if you get a minimum than that, uh, what a university needs, uh, you won't be get um, admitted there because uh, you need to be a teacher, you need to be a TA, a teaching assistant. So you they make sure that you have a good English proficiency. So TOEFL, uh, usually 100, 105, 110, anything above 110 is really good. Uh, 100, 105 are, is again good. For ILTS, uh, 6.5 is the minimum uh, in every field. You have uh, speaking, writing, listening. And uh, so all these things you have to have a 6.5 minimum and anything about 7, 7.5 is really good. So if you are having a 7, that's really great. If you're having uh, above than 7, uh, you're definitely in. So English proficiency waiver, uh, proficiency is something that you need to study for it. And it's always good to have a good command over English that will be useful. After then, that, uh, once you're done with these, by September, you have your GRE, ILTS, TOEFL scores. Now from September, uh, for most universities, you need three things, okay? Uh, statement of purpose or personal statement or research, uh, research writing. Other than that, you need a CV, that is the second thing. Third thing is letter of recommendations. So SOP, CV, letter of recommendation, these are the most, most, most important things uh, in an application. So by September, once you're done with your examinations, you have your uh, scores in hand. Now you need to know that which uh, in which uh, uh, universities I'll be applying to. So starting from uh, the US and Canada, where application opens the uh, in September, and the deadlines are around November 31, December 15. So by this time, all the deadlines are closed. So by uh, so what you need to do here is that you need to write SOPs differently for different universities. So SOP writing is one of the factors that determines your applications. So it is really, really important. And SOPs is something that is very, um, uh, I would say, very specific to a university because uh, each uh, SOP for a specific university uh, requires different things to be mentioned. They have a word limit. And most importantly, you need to get them checked to different people. Uh, so once you're, if you start in August, September, it may take you to write your SOP like a uh, thousand one SOP would require one to two months of writing and checking and then recorrecting. So it is a tough job. Believe me, it is really tough. So start early, start in September. By uh, uh, starting from September, you should, you should start your SOPs or whatever. It's in some places you want personal statement, do that. And in October, you need to work on your CVs and each uh, CV uh, can be specific to a university. Uh, you can mention specific points that uh, universities are looking for in your CV. Uh, like some universities prefer more. Uh, of course, you want to submit an academic CV there, but you can mention a few things that may highlight uh, uh, your CV um, uh, more than other people. It could be um, uh, social things. It could be sports. It could be something that stands out. So that is something that you need to work on a whole in October. Letter of recommendations is again a big thing because uh, letter of recommendation uh, you need to arrange from your professors and it's always good to have a professor that are known. So uh, I would make a separate video on letter of recommendation, is CVs and SOPs so you can follow that as well. So in letter of recommendation, uh, most uh, research institute if you work on pro professors are really, really busy so they may not uh, write the letter of recommendation for you uh, 
uh, on, on their own. So what they want is that you draft a, a, a letter of recommendation on their behalf and send it to them, which is then corrected by them and then they, up, uh, they upload it. So uh, you need to work on your letter of recommendations as well. And most professors, if you're in IIT or even uh, professors in research institute, some of them or most of them also like to uh, don't need your advice on that. They'll just uh, submit the uh, uh, letter of recommendation once you ask them. So it could be from your course instructor, it could be your uh, lab supervisors or uh, anybody who knows you who is a researcher. It could be your uh, coordinators as well if he's a professor somewhere. So they should be academically linked to you so uh, you can get a letter of recommendations from them and by october you should have your letter of recommendations you should have your uh, statement of purpose you should have your cv now november is the time you have one month you have you have to apply for like five to eight universities so in november you want to be free you want to uh, be co confident about your applications all the details you should be ready with your transcripts because you need to uh, you need to apply to your uh, previous bachelor's uh, if you're doing a master's you need to get your transcripts for your previous grades for bachelor's and all these things so that uh, by number you should have all the things that are required in applications including transcripts results whatever is asked and in number you should fill the uh, universities so basically there are two categories of universities uh, you can have uh, you should always make sure that uh, you choose cat uh, universities on two criteria uh, two bases you should have ambitious universities you so you should have uh, some uh, safe universities safe universities in the sense like you're almost 70 to 80 percent sure that you would get those universities if you apply ambitious universities could be high ra highly ranked universities uh, that you're not really sure you just want to give it a go that if I selected that would be uh, really nice. So you should have a proper balance. You should have more safe universities and two to three uh, ambitious universities. Let's say eight is a mini, uh, eight and five is a standard which uh, number of university that a person applies. So you should have two ambitious and three uh, safe universities if you're applying to five universities and similar ratios for higher number of universities you apply. So safe universities could be not so highly ranked. Uh, there could be professors if you're really um, if you're checking the uh, professor's profile and i've already have a video how to search for your supervisors if you're going through that route if you want us uh, to work a phd under some a specific supervisor it doesn't matter if, if he's from a good university or a university or not because there have been nobel uh, nobel laureates from uh, universities that are not even known so uh, if you want to go on that particular route you can go that and uh, that would be easy you can talk to professors there uh, safe universities could mean uh, mediocre universities uh, that you think you're competent enough and that way you make sure that you will be selected at least somewhere. Uh, one thing that is important is that uh, mailing to professors in US is uh, uh, not really a good thing because what they'll uh, end up replying is that please apply to the graduate school. So US uh, connections really don't work. Uh, they work to some extent if they're internal, but uh, not like uh, in open. So even if you apply to professor, reply may not come. And if it comes, it would be telling you that please apply to a graduate school. So please apply to a graduate school and you can use uh, links of your professors or uh, if your advisor knows some professor there, that could be more useful when you apply to Europe. So by December, you should have filled all the applications for US and Canada. In uh, January and February, you should be aiming for Europe, uh, Europe and UK, Australia. These are the things that application opens uh, in January to February. So in Europe or Australia, you need to mail the professor first. And once you're selected, if he likes you, you can get a very smooth pathway to the application. So mailing professors is really important. So please mail them around November to December. In November, you'll have a specific, you'll have uh, enough free time to mail professors. So please start mailing them uh, if you want to go to Europe. And by February, March, uh, uh, you should be having something, uh, especially replies from professor in Europe if they're really interested in you. By March, uh, usually if you have up already applied to US and Canada, you can expect the decisions by February to March. In February, uh, if you don't get anything by March, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, th hopefully that uh, should not happen with you. So 
if you have something in March, let's say it's not a really a good university, but you still have a call from it and your uh, uh, dream university is in US, you got a call from a, a low grade university, but you should still go there because doing a R&D in India or somewhere else would not give you that much exposure and your professor may not be known there. But if you go to a, a even a low ranked university there and arrange a letter of recommendation for your following um, PhD applications in US uh, through that institute, that would be much better. So by March, uh, if you have a, a small university, take it. If you're not still not satisfied, uh, you can start uh, looking for R&Ds. So research and development positions are also available. And by this, uh, you can get R&Ds for a year. You can get a paper in R&Ds. So that will always help you to get a better application the following year. So you can, even if you don't have anything by March, just start looking for uh, uh, research and development positions. Uh, now by March, uh, uh, all, you have already been to different universities. Now some universities are still looking for uh, students. It could be uh, like Germany, you can get very late, but uh, getting early is always a good thing. So uh, you can still have a chance by March in Korea, National University of Singapore. Uh, so all these universities are still open. There are specific sites that you can look into for all the details. And by uh, starting from March, uh, if you uh, you have already done what you could have done, so just focus on your net because you have uh, in June you have net. It's always good to have a net in India, even if you're going outside. It uh, it is recommended that you have a net uh, qualified. So by March, April, May, June, uh, this time you can all study for your CSIR net and uh, uh, hopefully you would get uh, whatever universities you want. So uh, that is the end of the video. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comment box or you can just mail us. You have our email IDs are mentioned on our channel. There are specific videos I've already made, uh, like you are doing PhDs in US and Canada. The link will be in the description box, how to, research, uh, how to search for a specific field in a research field. So all these things would be there. And I'll make a separate video on SOPs, LOR, CVs, so that thing will really help you. If you have any questions, please let us know. We are here to help you. Thank you. Inspire Chemistry.